Hey, Paul. Anyway, hey, Evil fans. Welcome to uh, our first class. And this class is, uh, I call it Hero's Master Class because it's Masters of the Universe. And this is going to be on, the first lesson is on tools and materials. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Before we dive in too quick, somebody asked a question earlier saying, hey, I'm planning on getting two Prince Adams. Can I use um, Prince Adams' hands for the sky sled for He-Man? And the answer to that is actually, yes, you can. The hands are fully removable, but the bad part is the skin color may not totally match. Now, the skin color in Prince Adam is a little bit lighter in color, so you may find that if you try to swap the hands out, which you can, that the coloring may not be exactly right. So let me do a quick show of that before we jump into our class. I want people to join, so you can see here. Here we have uh, Prince Adam and He-Man. And Prince Adam's hands are just a little bit lighter in color than He-Man's, but you can swap them out and use the two-fisted uh, or two open-handed hands so that He-Man can control the sky slip. But you can see the skin color is slightly different. All right, hopefully that answers your question. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So um, for those of you that this is your first time being here, well, it's everyone's first time, I guess, but first time on my channel. Um, basically, uh, we're going to try to run this about a half hour, give or take 15 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to sit around at 45 minutes, give or take 15 minutes. So it could be half an hour to an hour, depending on the material. All right, I think I saw a question come in. Yeah, I managed to find the entire wave at my Walmart. Oh, no way. You got e evil in as well, huh? That is great. All right, so for those of you that are joining, I have a download. You guys can download this sheet right here. And this sheet's basically what I'm going to talk about in this class and all the different O-rings and what they're used for and the sizes that you need. So if you want to download that, um, that PDF, you can keep it on your computer. There's links to some of the things you can click on to get them. And uh, hopefully that helps. All right, Maverick, that's cool that you have them all as well. Good job, you guys. So the first tool I want to talk about that's really important in any kind of customizing is some way to get hot water. Now, I personally use this right here for my hot water, and basically it just boils it really quickly. Now, the reason why you want hot water is you want to be able to boil and pop parts, what we call them. So you heat them up and you pop them off. Now, when you do this, you're going to want to get a paper cup, and the paper cup basically is going to be what you use for your water. So basically you boil it in here, you dump your water in there, put your parts in here for a few minutes to keep it warm. Now, this is not the only way to do this. Um, you can use a microwave, you can use a pan of hot water, um, whatever you want to do to do it to keep it hot. I personally really like to use this right here. And I would suggest you guys get something like this if you do a whole lot of customizing. And what it is basically is a small little hot plate with a cup on it. Now you can buy this um, as a set, but you don't get the clear cup, you get a solid cup. I happen to get a clear cup just for video so you guys could see what's soaking inside the thing waiting to, to be put onto another part. But they're really cool. You can adjust the heat on it. And I have a whole entire video just on this and how I made this. And uh, I first boil the water in there. And then I pour it in the cup. And I pour a little bit of water in here first to turn it on just so I don't break the cup accidentally. And then once um, I have the boiling water, I dump it right in there. And then I check the heat. And when you're, when you're doing the boiling and pop, we'll talk about that later. But there's certain temperatures you want to maintain. So the first thing you want key tool is some way to get warm water now if you're a more advanced person you can also use a heat gun late oh late to school again that's okay man and this is a heat gun i use and this is a actually a two-stage heat gun so you can have two different things now um if you are warming a part up and while you're holding the figure whatever it is if it's too hot for your hands it's too hot for the hot for the plastic you're going to end up ruining the plastic I've destroyed more figures with this gun getting it too hot. So um, if you do decide to go with the heat gun, be very careful. Um, just even just two days ago, I ruined a He-Man's fingers and melted them trying to fix them. And uh, now he has like a little finger. It's all shriveled up and blobbed on the end. Um, but the heat gun can work well as long as you're careful not to heat it up too much. So, and again, your idea is not to fry the figure or boil the figure in water when you do it. It's just enough to get the plastic soft. If your water is too hot, and we'll talk more about it during our, our heat and pop session, you'll actually see like a, 
um, like chemicals coming out of the figure and you know, ah, it's too hot. You're actually destroying the figure. So we'll talk about what temperature to maintain. And then we're getting Niger, Merman, Roboto, and Stratos. Oh, yes. That'd be so cool to get those figures. I'm really psyched for uh, Ram Man. And of course, you guys know I'm excited about getting Clamp Champ. That'd be cool. All right, another thing that's important to have on your uh, list of tools is some flat screwdrivers. Now, I do have a link to, to get these exact ones if you want on my, on my sheet if you click it. And I like these for a number of reasons. One, they got a nice long handle. They're pretty small on the ends. And you want to use these for removing loincloths and other things. It takes two screwdrivers sometimes to take off loincloths. So it's good to have these. Um, they're just handy to have all about. I also use it to apply super glue. So if I have like a small little joint I'm going to use, I'll put some super glue in a paper cup. I try to use these little ones so I don't waste too much. And, uh, and I'll use the tip of the screwdriver to get some super glue on there and put it exactly where I want it. So um, it's good to use these for all kinds of purposes. Um, these can cut you, so be careful. So if you are shoving on something, make sure your hand is not in the way. Make sure your hand's on the same side as the back of the screwdriver so you don't impale yourself with the screwdriver. All right, another thing that's really important is to get the right brushes. Now, there are all kinds of paint brushes out there, and I use all different styles depending on what it is I'm doing. But I found, for me, the best thing are these angled paint brushes. When they come to an angle, it's uh, really easy to uh, get to the fine points that you need with the edge of it here, but yet still have the full stroke if you choose to. Now, I also use uh, those little paper cups in order to... Uh, um, to mix my paints is very rare. You actually find the right color the first time. And when you do that, you may want to save your paint color. If you mix a lot into a small little container, so you can go back and do touch-ups later. So I found myself doing that many times, especially when it comes to greens. There's some reason I just cannot match greens very easily. Now, of course you got other brushes for specialty type stuff. And I always like to have one giant brush just to go over the material after it's dried to break off anything that might be loose on there. And we'll talk more about painting and stuff in, in further modules. I just want to show you guys what kind of brushes to get. Um, for me, the angled one's the best. The softer the bristles, the better. It's sometimes a good idea to purposely have a brush with rough bristles. So I've actually taken brushes and put super glue on them just so I can do like some wood textures and things like that as well. So that's, that's an important tool to have is those paint brushes. I'm going to go ahead and just drag this whole tray over here of tools because the next thing we're going to talk about is pliers and scissors. And you will find that when it comes to pliers and scissors, um, you want to have a whole bunch of different ones. Have, has any questions come in? No? Okay. So um, these here are awesome. Um, actually, where, where did, did you get these from? Do you remember? You don't remember where you got them from? Okay. Well, these scissors here, my wife thinks she got them from Home Depot, but uh, they're uh, um, Fiskar scissors, and they are like super sharp, and they have a ratcheting type motion to them, and they can cut through just about anything. But they're not super accurate, but they do do a great job slicing and cutting. Now, my go-to scissors are these small little purple ones. Yes, the land shark does look really cool there. I, I'm waiting for that too. And these uh, little cool purple ones are so sharp on the ends that when you have to cut armor, they work really good for actually cutting the armor for shaping. And a lot of my figures, you'll see that when I, when I customize them, you may have to cut the armor under the arms or m make the armor tighter before you glue it back together. So having these little sharp scissors are good. These ones here are also good ones. Um, they're very sharp but they're a little bit harder to close, so they're not as accurate around corners. So it's really important you can pick out some good scissors. Of course, I got these regular, ordinary scissors for long cuts. Sure, feel free to go to the restroom. Make sure you grab your, uh, your bathroom pass on the way, and it's a giant thing hooked to a, a rim of a car. So bring that back. Myron. It is Myron, right? Is that who asked that? You can go Maverick. to the bathroom. Oh, Maverick. So these scissors are... Uh, great for chopping off arms and uh, they work really well they're giant scissors and they got a lot of power behind them and so like a lot of times i'll stick like a 2000x arm right here or i've put a dragon's head in there before too and just chop it right off 
I'm not sure when those figures are coming out, Bo. I have no idea. But uh, um, I know they've already had pre-orders for them on Walmart. And I think it's October is when they said they're coming out. But I'm not positive. All right. So another tool that's important to have that's not on my list is a good set of calipers. Now, I personally like to use the plastic ones so I don't scrape the paint or the parts. And so uh, this caliper is both in inches and in millimeters. And why it's good to have calipers is because sometimes you need to find parts online. You need to know how big the area is for those parts you're going to get online. And see, so they'll actually measure the parts. Now, if you want more accurate calipers, you can go with the metal ones, which I have a pair here. I don't use them as often, but... Uh, I like to use the plastic ones. They're not quite as accurate, but they uh, cause less damage. If you accidentally slip, you won't scrape the paint as bad. So these are my go-to for measuring. All right, wire cutters and pliers. So I would suggest getting all different types of pliers. Oh, yeah, I want to see Killer too, Maverick. That'd be really cool to see him. So I have small little needle nose pliers. These were great for when you have to replace figures' legs. Also, large pliers for yanking pieces apart that you can't quite get apart. It'll take a, take a lot of strength. And, of course, you want your vice grips as well so you can latch on and grab them. Now, something not on my list that you also want is a good hole punch. You will find when you're customizing, you may have to punch a hole for stress relief. And so getting a good hole punch is a great idea. I have this, this adjustable one here for all different sizes. It's just a standard leather punch. And you will find that this is actually pretty invaluable to have it. Um, I worked on some, oh, Seahawk, and Seahawk, when I fixed his vest, I had to put a small little hole at the end of my cut so that it would not keep ripping. This also works great for putting the, the slits on She-Ra's uh, skirt. You make a small hole first with this, and then you cut it up, and the hole will stop the, the stress from continuing the cut on the skirt. And, of course, just some standard wire cutters. Some flat wire cutters. Those work great for getting in really close. And an important tool to have is non-marring pliers. These pliers have no serrations on the inside. And sometimes when you're grabbing stuff, you don't want to have the serrations because the serrations sometimes will destroy what you're trying to pull apart. See those serrations on there? They will just bite in and cause problems. So sometimes, for especially handling pieces that are made of rubber, you don't want the serrations on there. See, Maverick's asking, did I get the WWE figures? I got just some, just for the purpose of customizing into He-Man figures. Sorry, man. Try to find some of these, too. I do have these posted on different sites and on different places. And when we get into how to use these, I'll be posting these as well. These were great for pushing fig figure parts together and also for holding the heads in place. So a lot of times I'll take and pop a head on here when I go to paint it with detail. So I don't have the whole entire body in my hand or trying to hold the head by the sides. All right. I think that's pretty much it on this tray. So let's get into more advanced tools. So when you get to the advanced tools, and the first tool I'm going to show you, I have marked as an advanced tool. But if you are planning on customizing, you are going to need one of these. And I suggest getting one sooner than later. because It is my most used tool out of all of them, and that is my Dremel tool. The Dremel tools is basically a rotating tool, and depending on the bits you put on them, depends on what it's going to do for you. And so I find the stones work the best for this, so I would suggest getting some nice little cone stones like these. And uh, they work great for making uh, the holes and heads bigger and other parts like that too. Um, you will find that, you know, smoothing parts up on the edges that are rough. Like even today, I told a guy where to get a He-Man sword. I noticed the picture on eBay, it has some roughness on the edge of it. But you can just take and smooth that right up with something like that. Um, these are huge to have. So I would suggest pick up that Dremel tool. I got a link to a whole bunch of Dremel tools for sale if you click it. Um, and I would suggest getting those. Of course, also sandpaper. It's important to have. All right. So even though it's marked as advanced, it's a basic tool. You need that if you're going to be a, a customizer. Are there any other questions coming in? You did it to make a Stratos. I saw it in the background. Oh, yep, I did. I used one of the wrestling guys to make a Stratos. That is correct. All right, so another thing you want, this is not a necessity, but it's nice to have, is a hot knife. Now, having a hot knife is great for if you have to 
cut figures or other things, um, be careful. It will burn you, obviously. It's a hot knife. And uh, um, I've used this for all kinds of things, from shaping toes to altering mouths to uh, um, cutting, cutting plastic. So a hot knife, not a necessity, but a nice-to-have advanced tool. All right. On my list, I have some other things, too, that you may or may not want to get. One is a 3D printer, and the other one's a 3D scanner. We're going to have a whole module just for that alone, so I'm not going to get into details on that. Another thing you need is some sculpting tools. Now, when you actually get down to the advanced stuff, you may find yourself having to sculpt things and not just uh, take part some other things. So it's a good idea to have some good sculpting tools, um, all different types and sizes and shapes. Because when you start using different sculpting stuff, um, you are going to want to have a way to actually sculpt it. So when I worked on my Castle Grey Skull interior, when I sculpted the window, I used this right here for all the brickwork. And then for all the, um, the work that looks like stone, I had one. Let's see if I can find it. I want to know who are we customizing today? Today is just about the tools. We're not going to do any customizations today. But next class, we're going to talk about Boil and Pop. And that will be our first customizations. And it will be a surprise on who I'm going to do on that one. I use this right here to take a bunch of the stab marks in order to make the stone marks. And it ended up looking, looking really cool on my Castle Grey Skull. So, those are some other tools that you need. Let's get into our actual materials. So when it comes to materials, a couple things you need off the bat is you need heat, heat shrink tubing. I would suggest getting all different sizes of heat shrink tubing. There are all kinds of uses for it. You will find that once you have the heat shrink tubing, it just opens up for things to do. They can make uh, weapon handles larger. They can make joints um, tighter, all kinds of stuff. Um, I would suggest getting a, a bunch of heat shrink tubing. You can go to the auto store and pick it up. That's where I got this case from. I also ordered some special stuff online. Um, I used this black one right here for a He-Man stomach one time to make a, um, a, a, a horde trooper disguised He-Man to, to block all the robotic parts. So it looked like He-Man's stomach was correct. So that worked really good as well. Another thing which you guys see all the time on my channel is o-rings you definitely want to have a whole bunch of o-rings and you can see here i have quite the assortment they come in little kits like this and you can see on the sheet that i have for you to download it basically tells you what the the outer diameter the inner diameter and the thickness is on each one and so these ones right here are used for boots so if you need to ever take and, and make boots fit onto the classics figure this is the size right here the same size is also used for the uh, neck peg. So if you need to, to change a head on how deep it is or use some other head and sand it out first, you just glue in a couple of these and then it'll pop onto the classics head. So these are all very useful. These are used for tightening, tightening the legs around the, the um, crotch area and these are used for tightening the shoulder. I have all these numbers listed out. This is used for making a head stop wiggling and wobbling. So these you'll see these on uh, either he-bro.com or on the sheet that I have for you guys right there at the bottom. It lists all the different uh, O-ring sizes and what they're all used for. All right, another thing that's important is some good painter's tape. You're gonna wanna use this because when you ever clear coat a figure, if you clear coat the wrong areas, the part you didn't paint, you may find that the figure itself gets sticky from the clear coat. So make sure that you uh, tape that off. Fisto to make Wonder Bread He-Man. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I use too. Fisto works great for that because his loin cloth is already blue, already brown. This right here is my clear matte spray paint I use. If you guys want to uh, take a note of this. Um, I've gone through all different ones. This is kind of my trade secrets. I don't share this with people. But today for you guys, this is my paint that I use. And uh, it just puts a nice finish on the figures. It works great. Um, so this is what I use. And again, if you get this on the wrong kind of plastics without paint on it at first, sometimes it will cause it to be sticky. So be careful. Mask it off with your blue tape. So when it comes to paints, I know people have some questions about what paints I use. So, whoops. These paints right here work really well. And uh, um, I use these ones when, I, when I'm painting faces and heads. So... Um, the, the the Valo paints and um, these are a little more spendy 
and so I don't use these all the time. Most of the time for my paints, I'll show you my paint mess. I'm kind of heavy to get these over here. I have all these paints and my wife was very nice and she marked what they were on the top of the lid so I could find them. But these are very inexpensive paints. And what's cool is these actually dry, kind of crusty and dry. And then once you add the matte finish, you put a nice thick coat on, it soaks into the paint and turns it to paint into a really nice paint. So even though these are, these are not the best paint to use by themselves, once you uh, lock it down with that clear coat, and the nice part is these paints um, wash off really easy. So if you decide you don't like what you did, you just take it into the, the bathroom with a toothbrush and some warm water and some, some soap and it washes right off. Once you add the clear coat, it pretty much makes it permanent and then you can't wash them off very easy. So um, this is what I use. I do lots of mixing. And like I said before, I use uh, um, those little cups to mix my paint on top. All right. And this right here, I marked it skin, even though it's not skin, it's actually kind of a, a golden brownish, but I mix this with other colors once in a while, depending on the figure to change the hue, but that's my base for it. All right, do you guys have any questions yet? I know I'm kind of going quick through this. I would suggest picking up some super glue. These are my two favorites. Hey, Hebrew, if you ever want to create an Origins Merman, you can use Super 7 Vintage Filmation Merman head and armor, then repaint the Origins Skeletor, the use, the head, and the armor on them. Oh, that's, that's a great idea. Who, who was that that said that? Murphy. Okay. Thanks, thanks Murphy. That's a great idea to use... Uh, um, the Super 7 parts to make a merman. And then he said to use Skeletor and then paint it? Yes. Okay, that, that's a really good idea. All right. So another important tool to have in your arsenal is some sort of epoxies. Um, I use this all the time for stuff to lock it in place. Um, you can also use something like this as well, a quick epoxy. And then, of course, you guys have seen me use these two parts. Aves epoxy sculpt. Um, I like to use super white just to make it easy to paint. And in case I want it white, it already is white because it's really hard sometimes to get things not dingy when you want it nice, nice and clean. So again, it's a two part mix, mix them together and they work really well. This stuff works great because it's fast. We're talking within five minutes, it is setting up. So a lot of times I'll use these to seal and O-rings on action figures heads and that works really good. And this is used if I want to take and fill an area. So if I use like an old 80s action figure and I have O-rings inside the middle of the head make a pop on and off, I'll put this around the gap between the O-ring and the outside of the head. And that works really good to make the head more solid so it, it doesn't keep falling apart. All right. Q-tips are a must. They do a couple things for you. One, quick cleanup. Two, they cause super glue to dry instantly. So these are huge to use because that will dry your super glue instantly as soon as uh, you apply that Q-tip to it. And it's crazy. It's, even if you have glue in a gap somewhere, just touching the Q-tip to it will cause that glue to dry. Another way to dry glue quickly, as you saw in my other video, is of course water causes super glue to dry instantly too. But water will ruin the super glue, so um, if you want it to be permanent, don't put the water on there. Right. Can I get you to say I have the power? Because you sound like He-Man. Sure. I have the power! There you go. Another important one is balloons. I know it sounds funny, but uh, these balloons I use all the time for the midsection of action figures under their armor. And that works really great for uh, um, using this. And we'll actually have a session just for... Um, altering armor and altering figures with armor. So that will be another one of our sessions. I think that's just about it for tools and materials. Do get nice small paint brushes too for detail work. Now I know a lot of stuff probably sounds like, oh yeah, of course you're gonna need that. But I just wanted to show you guys what I use personally. I also use a little bit higher um, prescription, not prescription, but a higher uh, um, magnification glasses for close-up work. That always helps too. 
All right. So now, question and answers. I'm here for you guys. What are some questions and answers you have about customizing when it comes to tools and materials? I guess nobody has any questions. I guess I covered it all. All right. So main basic tool you need, some way to heat water. Microwave, some kind of pot to heat the water in. Um, something that's really important. Don't get the water too hot, otherwise you'll end up ruining the plastic on the figures. You won't notice it right away, but you will as time goes on. Keep your oh, my ace sculpt. In the fridge, I hear it keeps better. You know, I've never tried that. I just always leave it in my hobby room. My hobby room is usually pretty chill, so uh, um, I haven't had, haven't had to worry about it yet. What paint do you use where hair and boots won't be tacky? That is an excellent question. So for hair and boots, what I use, let me show you for a second. Hold on a minute. So that's, that's one of the customizer's uh, worst things is getting parts that become tacky. Because once they get tacky, it's really hard to unstick it. So an example is this guy's hair. I don't know if you remember how he came when you first got him. His hair was like a really bright orange. And I really didn't like the way his hair color was. Let me see if I can pop his head off and you guys can see I mean, the original color. You can kind of see some orange in there, how his hair was really orange. And I wanted it to look more like um, the classics figure. And you can see it's not tacky at all. So the way I do this is uh, I use the paints I showed you. These, uh, these type of paints right here. The ones that are really dry and crusty, but they are, um, um, they are all acrylic paints. And they do wash off with water very easily. But once you add your clear coat to it, and make sure it's matte. Don't ever use gloss. Gloss will make it sticky. Then it seals that paint in. And it doesn't, isn't tacky at all because you had that on there. Now, when I painted this, I did put, put my blue tape all the way around his face to protect it. Because I know if this got on the bare plastic, it would make it tacky. So I had to be careful not to get that on there. And I did the same for his armor as well. I painted his armor on this one too, I believe. And so I wanted him to look more like a classic He-Man when I was done with him. So there's an example of a guy that I painted. And again, if you... If you use the wrong kind of paint, never use testers. Testers paint will destroy your figures so quick. It's sticky, it's tacky. Um, even if you try to fix it later on with clear coats. If you ever do paint a figure wrong and you use something that's tacky or sticky, um, two things you can do. One, you can uh, try to bake the paint in the oven. Sometimes it will work, um, not all the time. Probably about 40% of the time it will work. When you do that, just keep turning the oven off and on and you use two cookie sheets to create an air pocket between the sheets and then have a piece of cardboard on top of the on top of the cookie sheet and then put your whatever it is you're baking on top of it keep the temperature um, no more than 180 the whole time and you have to do it for days so it's crazy how long it takes but uh um, sometimes it will work where the the, the the paint will actually bake and you won't have that issue anymore other times it won't and you'll just stay sticky um, another way to get rid of the stickiness, which of course stinks if you want a gloss look, is to put powder on it. But then again, once you add the powder, you're not going to ever be able to paint that again because that will cause the powder from not, um, will cause the paint not to adhere in the future. So does that answer your question about the, the paint? So use the acrylic stuff that you get at the craft store for two bucks a bottle or a buck fifty or a buck sometimes on sale. Yeah, I know it's cheap, and everyone goes, well, don't use that. But as long as you seal it in with this, it will make it more permanent. and makes a really nice finish. I mean, check out how cool the light gloss on this looks with that matte finish. Somebody wants to know, how do you fix a He-Man head if it's floppy? All right, there's a couple ways to do that. Um, if you're talking about uh, um, Origins or Classics, the best way to do it, and I actually show this with uh, my man-at-arms because his head was floppy. Let's see if I can find my man at arms in here. 
Nope. There he is. Huh. Got him out of there. So, here's my man at arms. And uh, when I got this man at arms, his head was really super floppy. Now, there's a couple ways to fix a floppy head. One way is to uh, put some of those small O-rings right in there. Now, when you do that, you also lose some mobility. So, if you're planning on using the O-rings, you're going to lose the mobility, and that kind of stinks. If you don't want to lose the mobility, take this uh, ultra-liquid gel super glue and just put one drop right in there. Push this back all the way and put the one drop in there. Once you put the one drop in there, grab it right here and start moving and rotating and moving and rotating and do not stop for anything. If you stop for a second, it will freeze and it will lose all mobility. Keep moving it and as you keep moving it around, um, that glue will start to get a little bit tacky and you can feel it start to, to, start to um, slow down on you. And that's what you want. Right when it gets to that point, when you feel that it has a lot of friction on there, take it under some water and pour cold water in there and that will cause the rest of the glue to dry instantly so you don't get it in any, any of the other mechanisms down below. And then after you get that all done, you can see now that this is much more sturdy and uh, that's how I fixed Man at Arm's head. And now he can actually stay where he's supposed to and not freak out with his head bobbing around. So, All right, great question. So, yeah, oh, sure. You're welcome. And like I said, next week we will do our first custom together and it will be a, a heat and pop custom. Very easy, basic level, easy stuff. All right. Was there any other questions that I missed? Mm -mm. All right. We've been on here now for just slightly over half an hour. So we're at our, our mark where we could end. So I do want to see if there's any more questions before I jump off. And hopefully by the third class, we will be finishing our 2000X custom He-Man. And how cool will that be? And I'll show you guys how to make the bracers and how to make all the other parts, the loincloth and everything. Um, that will require lots of dremeling and a dremel tool. So uh, you may want to, uh, if you're going to follow along with me, get a 2000X He-Man, get a Triple H um, figure, choose a head you want to use. I happen to use the one from... Uh, the snake armor he-man and uh i stole the boots from man at arms and gave him black boots yes i've heard that floor polish also works good for that as well yep i i personally just grabbed the super glue i already got it available for all my other customizing so it works great i've also used uh um, hot glue for joints i can get apart i've also used uh other things as well you just need something in there to cause friction so anything that causes friction will work all right you see uh, any other questions come in no okay all right you guys well hey, thanks for watching um again tune in at the same time ne next week can you use normal super glue you can but i would suggest if you use normal super glue without a tip on the end use the screwdriver trick with a cup so you don't accidentally go and a big glob goes inside your figure and destroys the whole thing so if you're planning on using regular super glue, let's do the kind in the little metal containers and you squeeze them. Um, if there's any glue on the end, you can lose control so quickly and then it just squirts everywhere and your figure is destroyed. So uh, cup, screwdriver, that way you can, you can control how much you use. And just don't stop moving that part. Once you stop moving, it's all over. Loctite is all right. Yep, I actually like uh, Loctite the best. They, they are my favorite. Um, it's strange if you pull this apart, inside here is one of those metal tubes. I saw somebody rip one apart and it's like, it's funny that this is just some cool um, delivery system. Case. Yep, case, there you go, yep. <laughs> now, there's also the gel kind. I don't know why I said it now, but the gel kind takes longer to dry and uh, See where I put the gel? Oh, there it is, behind Man at Arms. There it is. And the gel, t gel kind takes longer to uh, dry because it's thicker. But as long as you can use this to build up on parts too. So I'll use this sometimes. I'll pull apart an ankle and actually use this to build up that area in, in the ankle. 
and don't use water to dry it quickly with this or a Q-tip, or else you lose the idea of, of the buildup. All right. Hey, one important thing that I may not have mentioned in this video, but I have before, the most important part about gluing or painting or anything else is making sure the surface you're using is clean and dry. To get it clean, um, one thing you can do is use some light sandpaper and water. Afterwards, use some alcohol. Once the alcohol is on there, leave it wet and take a dry new cloth um, and wipe it off. I would suggest using a paper towel. It's better than using clothes, clothes rags. If you use some kind of clothes rag, sometimes they have residue on them left over from, from washing them. So I would suggest using a paper towel um, and wipe the alcohol off. And then afterwards, apply your paint or your, your glue. Sometimes parts will not stick together from the glue. So I create a small glue um, thin layer and then I will take the two pieces and then glue them together after, after the glue layer has been hardened on the parts. And that works really well for armor. Somebody wants to know what is grit sandpaper? What grit sandpaper? Now I use 400 and 800 for when I'm actually working on my parts. And I do this for a reason because uh, if you use just 800 alone, here's my 800 grit sandpaper, um, it's just too fine to, to do a lot of cleaning but it's great for final touch up. 400 is still super fine and I use wet sandpaper only. I don't go with the dry stuff. Now if you're trying to actually reshape something, um, use, use 150 to reshape it. But if you're not trying to reshape something, you're just trying to do a clean on it, um, 800, 400 works great for cleaning off any, any uh, residue. And you're looking for uh, what we call a, a water break free surface. And that's where if you put water on it, it sheens all the way across it and doesn't bubble up. If it bubbles up, it means there's still oils on it. And if those oils are on there, your paint's not going to adhere well or your glue's not going to adhere well. So you want to have it so when you put water on it, you just see a film of water um, going over the whole entire surface. Any uh, other questions? Nothing else is too many. All right. So I think I've covered pretty much the basics on the tools we need. And then next week we'll start. And again, next week, real simple, boil and pop. Oh, thanks, Lorenzo. Yep. Thanks. All right. So, oh, hey. I don't know if you guys have seen my cool hulks since we're kind of done. So this is, I like to uh, customize my hulks. And here I made like a Titus looking hulk. And one of the tricks about customizing, which is really part of the planning phase, is look at ordinary items and say, you know, I could use that for something. An example was his fist is completely closed, but I wanted this to fit in his hand. I wanted him to have a battle axe. And so what I did was I was in the closet one day and I noticed my wife's coat hangers. And I noticed they had these little hooks that are made for dresses on the side of the coat hanger where you hang the little, um, what are those called, straps of the dress. And I thought, you know what? That would probably fit in a figure's hand just like that. So now we have this protection in front. I don't have to drill a hole in his hand and he can hold the battle axe and it looks like it's going through his hand. And then I took uh, one of the battle axes from the 12-inch um, giant He-Man figures they made and uh, just cut it off, added some O-rings for some cool detail, painted it silver, and there we go. There is the Hulk's battle axe. So he is ready to rumble. Ugh. So just look around you. You'll be surprised how many ordinary things could be used to make some cool customs. Actually, you know who's good at that? I have a friend, his name's Steve, and you've probably seen him draw on, my, on this channel before. And he looks at things, and it, it's crazy. He will look at, like, just some ordinary thing on somebody's desk and turn it into a spaceship. <laughs> He'll cut it up, remake it, repaint it, and next thing you know, this ordinary thing is now a really awesome spaceship. Oh. Dean, that's really cool that you made a Titus out of a massive Thor figure. That is a, that is a great idea. All right, you guys. Well, this will be the end of our first class. Um, I'm going to take this video, and we're going to actually uh, pull it offline in a, in, a, in a couple hours, and we're going to put a new video in its place that will be premiering. If you guys are already here for the class, um, don't feel obligated to watch the premiere. It will be the same video you just watched. But that way, then, it will be listed in YouTube under premieres instead of under live videos. And we'll do that every single week. So if you miss a week, just watch the premiere um, later on. All right. Thanks for watching. 
Um, do you have any? Do you have any any, any final words? No. Nope. Thanks everybody for joining. All right. Thanks you guys. Bye now. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Thanks, Don. Thanks, you guys. Bye now.